to embrace you tonight. Sing it again. I've been longing to see
to happen to you tonight. The Bible says in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. The Bible says in the presence of the Lord your enemy smells as wax before the fire. How many of you want the presence of the Lord? I will bring my presence there as well. But the Spirit of God said, you watched your tiger becoming a mere little cat. And the Spirit of the Lord said, humiliation has come to that man who is claimed as the greatest athlete in the world. But the Lord said, I would address this tonight. For if you do not humble yourself before the Lord, surely you shall be humbled, says the Lord. The humility that shall take over shall cause Tiger Woods to be led to the Spirit of God where he will call out for the name of Jesus. For this he has been taught. And suddenly there will be a revival amongst the athletes, says the Lord. Come on! Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Come on! in golf. Listen, I believe God plays golf, people. Stop it. God is interested in the athletes because he wants to tell the world that his son is alive. God said, I'm going to visit Tiger Woods in a very special way. And there will be a revival amongst the athletes where there will be those gathered together that will suddenly be filled with my Holy Spirit and they will make declaration of Jesus and his resurrection. Come on. Come on. Say yes. Yeah. Say this with me. You're the resurrection and the life beginning and the end. You're the resurrection and the life beginning and the end. Resurrection. You're the resurrection and the life beginning and the end. Come on. You're the resurrection and the life beginning. and the life beginning and the end come on you're gonna wrap it with me right now let's go you're the resurrection and the life beginning and the end say 
You're the resurrection and the life beginning and the end. There we go. See ya, boom. You're the resurrection and the life beginning and the end. Come on, what about resurrection? You're the resurrection and the life beginning and the end. Come on, how many know it's true? You're the resurrection and the life beginning. Congratulations. How many of you can feel that the Spirit of God is eager, more eager than ever, to visit this nation? I believe that we have been through a decade of warfare, a decade of pain, even though there's been joy. We've been through a decade of difficulty, of war, strife, division, economic attack, and the Spirit of God says 2010, and the decade starting in 2010 will be the exact opposite for the church and for the people who believe that in the opposites. How many believe in the law of the opposites? How many you know it's time for something to be buried and something to be resurrected? How about poverty being buried and prosperity being resurrected? How many of this building are ready for something to be buried tonight? Let's say these words of me, I'm ready to bury that's all there is to it now you're going to bury something tonight so if you're sick and tired of being sick then it's about time you buried it so God can resurrect healing because there is, there is a spirit of resurrection that is present in this place and on this nation lift your hands and thank you for it right now feedback on the platform here just turn it down just slightly on the on the monitors that little girl in the red dress over there yeah the one the lady that turned around you're carrying her on your shoulder now you hear what the Lord says because the children are the focus of the enemy's attack the children are the focus of the enemy's attack sex slavery abortion God said because of that, because of the attack against them, we all know that there is a double portion that is being granted to the church, to the people. This child is one of them that has been chosen, set aside, to do, and the word that I'm hearing, remarkable things. She has been marked. She has been marked. She has a scar. A blood mark is upon her, which is the blood mark of Christ. Therefore, remarkable things shall be done. And because the enemy tried to dissuade, tear apart, and destroy the environment of this child, I will give a double portion back of life, of love, watch for his restoration. But God said, you watch the remarkable things that she will accomplish in this life. And God said she will have a lot of breath and a lot of sound in her lungs. 
because the Lord has given to her back what the enemy tried to steal when she was born. This is his word. She will open her mouth and make decoration and remarkable things will take place. Say yeah! All over this building, things are happening right now. All over this building. All through the internet right now. People watching my internet, things are happening. Come on. When the supernatural presence of God is here, we can only expect something to happen that has never happened before. You can feel it. There's something happening in this building. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. He's filling lungs. He's giving lungs. He's filling lungs right now. He's doing a miracle in lungs. I'm not here to do miracles. I'm here to give you your destiny. He's filling lungs right now. There are two, two situations with emphysema and lung cancer where God is breathing into their lungs right now. If you are that person, you know that person, wave your hand. Because he's going to do it, to change it immediately. Samuel is one of them. Samuel, J James. God's doing a miracle for you right now. I believe you're watching me on the internet. There are people watching all over the world right now. Samuel, Jamestown, or J living in Jamestown. God is doing something for you right now, breathing in your lungs. There's one person watching me that has had incredible attack. It's been for months, literally. And I feel the fear that you're feeling right now. There are a few signs. Right in front of you, above the television, or above your computer, wherever you're watching. I think it's a television, actually. There is a huge cross with something draped over it. That person, this is a sign to you that God is speaking to you. Matthew Hendry. The Matthew Hendry commentary is right next to you. God is saying to you, stop looking for an answer. In the commentaries, stop looking for an answer. From the theologians of yesterday. The answer is right ahead of you, right in front of you, says the Lord. I'm going to touch you with my presence. Now you reach out to this very second and my presence will come in and destroy that enemy that's touching your life right now. Give him praise. There's a spot on the lung. There's a spot on the lung. Keep praying with me. Keep praying with me. God's doing something. Your, his presence is going into your house. His presence is going into your house. There's a young boy that, that constantly been suffering from asthma. There's a young boy that's constantly suffering with asthma. Who is that person? Please wave your hand to me. It's in your family. Or wave your hand. It's over there. Please stand out. Come out the aisle right now. Greg Dunham, where are you? Greg, wave your hands up. Spirit of the Lord wants you to know something. Your children will never suffer from lung problems. Now, I don't know why I'm even saying that. They will never have asthma. God said they will have the power of knowledge. For the knowledge that has been given to you and your wife shall increase. For even as you have stepped out and said, I want to do something so creative and so different. That you don't even realize you're about to move in and get in on the cutting edge and to produce stuff that will reach into the hearts of lives that are unrighteous. You are not built for the righteous. You've been built for the unrighteous. You have been built for the ordinary. You've been built and you've been created for the extraordinary. And the Lord says there is an extraordinary breakthrough that is coming for you, Greg, in 2010. And it'll begin at the beginning of the new year. It shall happen on the stage. You'll set something and I'll turn it around, says the Lord. And I'll move you to a higher place, says the Lord. Are you ready to move to a higher place? Hallelujah. Come on. I'm ready to move to a higher place. I'm ready to move to a higher place. Say it. Are you? I'm ready to move. That's what's happening. This gentleman over here, you have a 
sweat on. Yes. Just turn around. Please raise up your hand. Who is that next to you? Hello? Come here, sweetheart. Tonight's your night. Lift your hands and pray. Keep praying with me. It's triplets. Triplets, triplets, triplets. And they're about to be born. It's a great sign to a family. I have a feeling it's... I think I'm dealing with a lot of people on the net, on the internet right now. There's a beautiful spirit here. Just keep staying with me. Just stay with me. I, I literally feel like God wants to do extraordinary things. The words that have popped from the heavens into this building are extraordinary and remarkable. No more ordinary. Everybody say, no more ordinary. Extraordinary. Keep praying, keep praying. Something's happening. The stand with the red cap on, whatever you call that thing. Put your hand up. It's where the Lord says that you touched your head. I touched your head. As you touched your head, so did I. Because there's a whole, there are a whole lot of things in there that I want released, the Lord says. So you can become an effective, powerful missionary. So what are you talking about? I could never be a missionary. So Saul of Tarsus thought as well. You will be on a mission by the summer of next year. And you'll say, my God, what happened to me? Everything changed in a few months. And God said, happy birthday to you. Because there's go there, there will be a remarkable thing happen in your birthday, on your birth, before your birthday, and then straight after it. Why? Because there's a mission that I've got for you. What's in your head must come out, and it must be expressed, and must be put on paper. And God says, don't say you cannot do it, because you can, and I'll show you. But you have been down, down, down. Now God says, you're going to go up, up, up. Come on. Hey. You've been down, down, down. You're going to go up, up, up. You've been down, down, down. You're going to go up, up, up. You've been But you want to go up. Why should you be down all the time? Come on. God just said to this man, he's going to go up. There are many of you in this building, and many of you watching me right now, you've been down. But God said, you're going to go up. What does that mean? A door has opened in the heavens. John on the island of Patmos. He said, He's standing at the door and he's knocking. If anyone hears his voice, what's the qualification? Hear his voice. What will he do? The, hearing his voice opens the door. In Revelation 4 verse 1, the Bible says, John said, And behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice that I heard said, Come up here to a higher place and I will show you things that will take place yet after you've been down 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 you're gonna go up 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 I've been down 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 I'm gonna go up 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 I've been down 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 standing next to you. Have I prayed for you before? Have I ever prayed for you? No, you can't sit down. What are you talking about? Come, 
let's pray. First of all, God says, I want to completely heal you. Take every sickness out of your body. Nothing to spread. That's the beginning. told me that keep praying with me everybody Jerome Jerome I'm hearing the Lord's voice saying Jerome now I don't know who that is because I'm not sensing it's anybody here but I feel like a lot of people are being ministered to by the internet right now And if it is somebody here, just wave your hand. Or you know that person. If there is going to be an invasion into our Jewish family. Huge. And I believe that somebody by the name of Jerome, I have to do this, even though I'm not getting response, because that's the word of the Lord coming to me. When there's a gathering like this, God is going to minister to you, the audience that are watching my internet, plus he's going to speak to the region, to the nation, and to the nations of the world. The presence of the Lord is here to remove. The enemies will melt as wax before the fire at the presence of the Lord. So I feel like a lot of people are watching and being touched right now. Or will be touched as they watch this too, days from now. Jerome! This was just to you a coincidence that you saw this. But you've been called out and set aside for God's purpose. But I am of Jewish origin. I am not a follower of Messiah. For he has not come. But you're just about to find out that he did. Keep praying with me, everybody. Now on the other side, there's an Islam Islamic family that are represented here tonight. If you know that family and you want me to pray for them, I want you to wave your hand, please. An Islamic family that you are aware of that are in tremendous suffering. Is it you? Who is that person? Come over here, please, right now. Give them, give them a hand as they take the courage to stand before me. This gentleman that was next to this lady, God wants you to know, come forward please, come forward please. God wants you to know, sir, that there is, there is never a loss. In the kingdom of God, there is no loss. Because when something is taken from you, it's handed to God. Because the enemy always has to hand it back to God. And what God does is he cleans it up, multiplies it, and then gives it back to you. Now, if there's anybody in this building that's had some kind of loss, and I'm not talking about necessarily a, a family member or something like that, but some kind of loss, I want you to know tonight that I feel the Spirit saying, remarkable, extraordinary things are going to come out of any attack that you've had. And then, I'll, and then I'll let you sit down. In the meantime, the miracle is happening at this very second. What miracle am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the miracle of your youngest. Where God's going to invade that whole situation. Touch him. Turn him around. And God's thinking, the, you're going to literally hear. Do you have an email address? You have a little bit of fire in you, you know that. That's what I'm seeing in that email. And that's, you're going to hear something from him. It's going to shock you. Not in a bad way, in a good way. And you're going to literally take that little computer and just say, Oh my God, look what's happened. When you've sometimes struck down in frustration. 
Spirit of God says you're going to be throwing your hands up in the air. Everything is going to turn around for you. How many of you actually believe that can happen for you as well? What are you praying for? Okay. And it's your sister is married to who? Come stand over here. Who is she married to? Keep praying, everybody. Lift your hands and pray. Who is she married to? Uh, okay. okay. That's what I've got. This whole thing is right at this very second. That You know why this is happening to her? Because she's a goof falling all over the show. Sometimes when you get aligned with the perfect will of God, it's almost like something shocks you. Some of you are out of alignment. You need to be back in alignment. To be at the right place at the right time for the right reason at the right season. I'm sick of being I'm hearing people that are out of tune. God wants to fine tune everything and put you back in contact with Him. And I believe tonight it's happening in this building. Come on. Come on, pray with me. Don't be discouraged. I want every person in this building that's lost something. Every person in this building that has lost something valuable to you, I want you to raise your hand. That's just about every person in this building. Some of you are watching on the internet. Give me a song going, Charlie. Let's go. There are people watching me on the internet right now. Same thing. So much loss. I want you to begin to think about it for a second. That he, he wants to hand it back to you with a portion that you've never had before. If you believe that, I want you to give God a shout of praise. Come on! Come on! Come on, let's go! Come on! Everybody give him a shout of victory! Says 
side. I ran. You will run. Your, fa your, your sister's family or the family that are in Iraq right now. Is it Iraq? You know, it's Iraq. 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 Okay. Because there's one Iranian connection that I was on about, and there's family in Iraq right now that are going to turn around one by one, just one by one, not, not all of them together, but two of them at one time, because they're so close, shall come in at once to the kingdom of God and be free and be joined to you, to the house that has been destroyed by drugs and by all the stuff that endeavored to spread, I will stop it. And tonight I give you my promise, it shall come to an end, says the Lord. Come on. Come on. I ran. You will run. Come on. You brought the sign to Iran. The man with the green clothing on. I want you to begin to run. Run! Let's go! Let's go! Run, run around! Here we go! Let's go! to the Lord. Come on. Now, the Lord says, look at this color. It's green. Green for go. But I will accelerate and cause you to run. I'm not talking about physically I'm talking about in business, in ministry, vocally, and the Lord God has put upon you a spirit of acceleration. But let this be a sign to the people tonight that that same acceleration has been set upon you so you can advance speedily and do extraordinary things, says the Lord. Come on! Come on! I told somebody to come out the aisle there. I think they came out, then they went back. Oh, you guys are with it. Listen to you, listen to you. Anyway, back to you. I'm talking about money. God wants to tell you that he's restructuring everything so he can put money into your hands. I mean, a lot of money. So you better get ready for it. Well, how do I get ready? You always get ready by this mental adjustment the renewing of the mind in other words i'm not going to look to my past to dictate my future i'm not going to look to history to dictate destiny destiny is not dictated by your history your destiny is dictated by the kingdom and what god spoke the day that you were born and before you were born how many of you in this morning would agree with that say yeah Say this with me, my destiny is not dictated by my history. My future is not dictated by my past. It's dictated by God. And tonight, in this building, I will step forward into my destiny. Now lift your hands and thank you for that tonight. Come on. Keep praying, keep praying. Keep praying, everybody.
16th of July. 16th of July. Who is that? 16th of July. What? Come. Did I? Did you tell me that? I walked to this lady and I said to her, "What do you want me to pray for?" She said, "I want you to pray for my grandson." Then I shouted out a date. And what is that date? 16. Yeah. That's his birthday. Now, when God does this, it means he's predicting that his birth, as is anybody's, but is of utmost importance to him. And it shall all change by the summer of next year. Okay, Mike, we can't wait that long. Yes, don't worry. God is working it out so that all of them will be affected by this miraculous invasion of the Lord God Almighty. Keep praying with me, everybody. God will remove a cancer that is trying to eat away the faith that was placed there by Uncle Charlie. Listen to me, everybody pray because this woman's life is coming before me. He will extend the years of your life so that you will see the salvation of God in every one of them. I will take from behind the bars, prison bars, and fill him with my spirit, says the Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Come on, God's alive in this place. I say yes, yes, say yes, and amen. Do it with me. Let's go. Yes, 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 and amen. Impossible. One more time. Yes, 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 lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Don't worry. Let the peace of God that, pass, that passes all understanding touch your life. Your prayers have come before the Lord. That the years of your life to come would be years of fruitfulness, your family gathered around you as they were in the 30s. Let it be re revisitation of the family altar. I will make a family altar for you. God says you will be pleased at what you see for the, wor the word of the Lord has come to you today. To Sing a long table. Sing about 19 people sitting at this table. Some gone, some here. The large family. God said many of them made it into the heavens without you even realizing it. One specific person. The scar on the chin. God said entered into heaven. Many doubted this, that God said it's happened. Therefore, do not fear. I have my hand upon your family, says the Lord of hosts. Come on. Come on, everybody. Let's pray in this room. I know you've stood a long time, but there's so many beautiful things happening right now. God knows what he's doing, people. All we've got to do is just step out there and let him speak to us. We've had loss. Now God wants to toss that and give you that. Stop looking at what you think you've lost. The God will turn the whole thing around. Come on, keep praying. There's a strange thing. It was just announced to you or you just found out that he is gay.
you're devastated you're saying that's the end of the end of the line for me for my family because he's gay now God says I want you to be bold and strong you forget about religion and everything else you, you seem devastated right now because you just found out he's gay God wants to tell you something and I want that person to please wave their hand to me if you just recently found out about being gay I want you to wave your hand to me now so take a bit of boldness a bit of courage I should say not boldness courage but you want God to do something is it you everybody pray together pray together come on you've You've been a strong audience in Seattle, always is. Washington is the best. It doesn't matter, because there is someone else as well. Here we go. Come on, lift your hands and pray with me. Okay, okay, I don't want you to tell me anymore. Where is he now? Come up here, both of you, please. How many of you believe in the extraordinary and remarkable? Remar I said remarkable. Look, we're in Washington right now. We believe in remarkable things. We believe in extraordinary things. We're in America. We believe in order, extraordinary things. Whatever she wants. If she feels like staying there, it's fine. that you raised your granddaughter and, and then there's a change of name too I believe she wants to change her name she does but the Spirit of God wants me to share this with you you know I don't always like to always bring good news and I haven't always done that from the Lord but he cannot speak bad news he doesn't know how to do it. God is incapable of speaking death into the future. He's incapable of doing it. So I can say... input in her life will bring her back and a man will wipe her off her feet his name is Robert his name is Robert just remember those words and it shall be like this they shall say one Bobby shall meet another Bobby crazy I know but just watch how it unfolds this man will sweep her off her feet and give you what you deserve 
children. The lighthouse shall be raised up in your presence. Look to the future, but God said it shall change. And great shall be your day of rejoicing, says the Lord. For you've had much pain in your life. You've had people let you down, walk away. And you, you, the enemy's about or is, has planned to just about do the same thing. Bring ultimate destruction. The one thing you did tell me, and then I stopped you, was this man. to change this whole thing I'll, I'll tell you the whole thing is I know it right now I know very little from her what I'm hearing is is different to what is coming out your mouth first of all there was there, there was one but there were three that's what I'm hearing from him the other thing I'm hearing is the molestations not there were various a variety of them if I can use that term when he was, this is in church environment, is that correct? Therefore there is a bitterness upon him that God can only remove, says the Lord. Keep praying with me, keep praying. I'm seeing Taylor, Taylor. Is he still married to you? Okay, he wants to leave. He's, with the, he's, not, he's not with another man. He is sleeping with another woman. I'm seeing it and it is a Jezebel it is a spirit of witchcraft manipulation and control and now the Lord wants us to drive this out everyone in the house lift your hands and begin to pray loud you may be watching me right now by internet you've got the same problem some of you are suffering from the same thing lift your voice there is an area called Taylor there's a place it's a Yes. yes, yes, it's a place. Yes, that's right, a road. The Spirit of God says, I will pluck him out. But he has said, he, I hear these words, he says, I no longer believe that there is a God. I'm not an atheist, I'm an agnostic. But that says, God says, now watch what I'll do with an agnostic. Watch how I'll turn him around because my invasion shall be come out of, he shall come to me. He'll come to me with fear and trembling. And God said, he'll run back to the cross because of what I'm going to do. Says the Lord, come on. You've got a shout of praise. I say yes. Come on. Nothing is impossible, nothing is impossible Because I say yes, yes and amen One more time, everybody say Nothing is impossible, nothing is impossible I say yes, yes Yes and amen. Oh, you now that you can say yes. Now the loudest you have ever done. Go. Oh, you sound incredible. One more time now. Give the Lord a shout of victory. You've got it tonight. Yes. Before you sit down, say these words with me. I'm receiving. I'm acting a little crazy. Which reminds me of David. When he lost all his clothes. Dancing before the Lord. With all of his might. Because he was dancing to his destiny. Mount Zion. On the way there. He was so excited, dancing before the Lord, twirling around, started losing his clothes. 
religion was watching him and got real upset. She said to him, what are you doing making an idiot of yourself before the woman? And he said, if you think I'm acting crazy and uncivilized, just watch me now. Guess what? David was fruitful. Religion went barren. I'll tell you what happened tonight with your prophet together. We went and danced towards our destiny. And the very thing that is trying to control you went barren tonight. It went barren tonight. Something went barren tonight. Something went barren tonight. wonderful people, warriors of the new millennium. Wow. You know, I used to do this when I was, when I started in ministry at the age of 22. Now I'm 53. I said, God, when is this going to stop? <laughs> but he said, so you'll dance yourself to the grave. You'll rejoice. You'll be energetic and full of passion. He said, you know what's going to happen? You're going to live long. The fact is that this weekend, God wants to tell you in December that there is, besides the fact that there are many, many different various things that are taking place, that are causing difficulty for a lot of people, like the recession, you can give me a little background stuff, recession and various things. There's so much good. You know, I was thinking about the dynamic and the demonic. And I wish I could teach you, but you could actually hear it. 
because I have a school called the School of the Prophet. How many of you are students of the School of the Prophet? Let me see you. Thank you. Isn't it great? Now you seem to be one of them. We just did a course called Revelation, Prophetic Revelation. It's easy. It's not a lot of money. Just go on there. Eight incredible lessons where I teach on what Revelation does when God reveals something to you and how you deal with it and how you handle it and where it could take you. One of the things that religion, excuse me, uh, Revelation does, besides destroying religion, the revealing of God's word or whatever he's shown you releases something inside of you called spiritual motion. You see, because we could become stagnant and dormant spiritually. It's, it's very easy. Complacency is so easy. Comfort zone is something people enjoy being in. At the very appearance of rut, I get angry. At the very appearance of passivity, because I know that's what the enemy wants. To get us to a place where we are, in, we are unstable, so we, we are double-minded. And a double-minded man is unstable in, his, in all of his ways. But in this course of Revelation, I teach on Revelation. And it's very simple. You just go to my website and look for Join the School of the Prophet. And, and it's eight courses and it's, teach, it's just teaching. Tonight was, I can't teach tonight. I'm completely out drunken with this surge of energy that comes from above called dunamis everybody say dunamis on the day of pentecost there was a thing called dunamis which really is the word not dynamite but dynamic and i tell people in my on my course while i'm teaching that right now is there's something you don't understand you either see the demonic or you see the dynamic because there is a dynamic that comes out of any attack in your life, which means you are being pushed to a higher level. You're being forced out of complacency into a place where you have to do something that you're not acquainted with, but you're capable of doing. The revelation gives you the audacity and the capacity to do this thing that you thought you could only dream about. And you, you, you lie in bed and think about it at night, whatever. But this could become a reality. But destiny is a beautiful thing. So the enemy wants, and, and you know really he has the power to speak to the intellect. Satan, or your enemy, your adversary, speaks to your intellect. And if you are sinless, he even speaks to you. What do you mean? He spoke to sinless Eve and he spoke to sinless Christ and suggested Eve fell, Christ did not. We know that. But the word devil is diablo and divided into two words, diablo. Blo means to whisper, to blow. Dia means to. Basically, the enemy has one power to speak, to divide, to speak, to cause instability, to whisper, to divide. So you have two minds and now you are in, unstable and so you don't move. And God wants you to move and that's what prophets do. They come in and they get you moving. <laughs> the prophetic anointing that is present tonight and the word that the Lord gave to us about the future, and he's going to tell us a whole lot more tomorrow. He's basically telling us we're ending a decade of friction, violence, war, battle. How many of you know that there cannot be demonic only? There has to be dynamic. There has to be dunamis. How can we go on fighting, battling, struggling? How can we continue this? There has to be something positive, powerful that comes out of this great struggle. 2010 is about to introduce to us the 20 X's. 20 X's. 
That's the, that is the group that's coming out in the next decade. Who are they? You're going to find out. I won't know the whole thing until New Year's Eve when I stand in Los Angeles and I prophesy what I've been dimly given by the Spirit but my God what I've seen is unbelievable. The culmination of the Jesus movement, Isuzu Street, the charismatic movement, the faith movement, the culmination of all of this in one and much, much more. Today I was reading in Romans chapter 8 where it says, it says the earth's creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The earth is in bondage until a group of people arise on the earth prior to Jesus Christ coming that will literally cause the earth to obey them, the earth to yield its produce to them. So that's, that's crazy. No, it's not. The prophets of old, as I taught you the last time I was here, they spoke to creation. He used twigs to do something in water and he used flour to heal people of a, a poison pot. They, they used the earth and that was in limit. So what are you trying to say? I'm trying to tell you that there are healings and, and there, are, there are ideas and, and things that are going to come forth when the, this group of people arise called the manifested sons of God. And now I'm talking about this, the group that are, that are in, er, erroneous in their doctrine. I'm talking about your sons and your daughters, your grandchildren that will arise and begin to chase after God. Your sons and your daughters, even the little ones like that little one with the red dress that will arise and suddenly the earth shall yield its produce to her by the power of their words. These are the 20 X's. I believe this is that time. You may think I'm crazy, but the earth is waiting for these to arise so that they can dictate the future. And so I want to encourage you now all of you that are watching me, watching by internet, as God has spoken to us tonight, we are going to pray a prayer and ask Him to give to us everything that He has promised. Now, I'm going to tell you one story. There was a man who was a king, and Elisha was dying. You're going to love this. You've heard it before, but I'm telling a little more. Elisha was dying, and the king said. spoke about the horsemen and the fight that he was going to have. And Elisha said, give me your bow and your arrow, or take it in your hand. And Elisha put his hand on top of the king's, because Elisha was very weak. And he, he directed the arrow and they shot the arrow. And then he said to the king, I'll tell you what I want you to do now. Take the arrows that you use to shoot. And I want you to strike the ground. And that's crazy. The monarch thought to himself, I have never used these arrows to strike the ground. Has this prophet lost his mind? Has Elisha got to a place where he doesn't understand what he's talking about? Arrows are not used to strike the ground. They're used in a bow to shoot. That's what you think. God's going to take that which you are accustomed and acquainted with and use you to direct it in a different way to use it in a different way and you watch what will come out of it. You thought that thing has become stagnant. Moses thought that stick that he had in his hand was, was, had become stagnant, non-productive. It was a staff that he'd held in his hand for 40 years. And God said, he said, how am I going to do this, God? God said, what do you have in your hand? He 
said, it's a stick. I, I've got acquainted to it. This is what I direct my sheep with. He said, throw it down. Abandon your idea. Abandon your, your thought of what this is going to give to you. What can be done with the stick? He threw it down and abandoned it. And suddenly the stick became a serpent. Elisha, at least uh, Moses ran. So afraid was he. So Elisha said to the king, I want you to strike the ground. And so he said, okay. Got down. He struck once, twice, three times. And then he stood up. And Elisha was mad. He said, you know what? You dictated the outcome of this prophetic moment. You only struck three times. Therefore, you will only have three victories over this this, this army that is coming against you, this nation. But had you continued striking over and over and passionately, you would have wiped them out. Do you know, I began to think about this. Do we really have the power to dictate the measure of our destiny? Do we really have the power to dictate the outcome and the greatness or the less of it? Yes, we do. By the way we respond when God speaks. You see, he could have become passionate. He could have struck over and over. You dictate the outcome of the prophetic revelation that God gives you by your response. Because how you respond, God watches. And then sets it and says, okay, I'm going to give him that. Because at the point of giving the revelation, he responded in a dramatic extravagant way next time God says something to you and I watched you tonight you screamed and shouted you jumped up and down I loved it you weren't taking it lightly even if you've heard it before you said this is the word of the Lord and started shouting and jumping why because you're ready to go up most of you ready to move You've been stuck in a crisis, and from one crisis to the next, it's over. I promise you, it's over. And God has promised us a sign over Christmas, a very special sign that's going to take place for every one of us. And once we see it, the change will take place. We'll move into 2010 and into a new decade with brand new and fresh revelation and an opening of the heavens. And some of the problems we've had are, are going to go barren. Have no power anymore. How many of you are excited about that? Tonight, I want every person in this building that truly believes that you are going to be a part of this that God spoke. I want you to respond in an offering. See, it's very seldom that God sends a prophet to you. See, because I went to a hotel today, and the, the, oh, the manager, the guy who manages the whole hotel, came and greeted me. And he said, I want you to come in, and I want you to sit down at this table, eat a little bit of food. I said, well, I've got a meeting tonight. He said, God said, I must give you this, because I want the prophet's reward in my hotel. That's thinking. See, there is such a thing as a prophet's reward. This is not tithing. This is offering. And you know, when you, when you come before God and you say, Listen, I just heard what you said. I don't want to strike once, twice. I want to do something big. At the point that you gave me this revelation for my house, my family, my future, my work, my ministry, and what you said, the loss is actually being turned around to be given back to me. I want to do something because God, I want the prophet's reward. Whatever he's prophesied, I want it, but I don't want a little bit. I want an abundance. So I want everybody watching me, now, even you watching by internet, all of, I call them internet audience. They are my warriors. They just happen to be electronically available. But they are out there and I want you to listen to me. Take advantage of what's happening in this mo at this very moment in time. God spoke to so many people. Some of them so precisely. He wants to do the same for you tonight. 
And I want you to do me a favor. Pray with me now. And ask the Lord. Say to him, I want to do something with this that I have. Money seems the same thing to me. No, it's not. I'm going to change it. And I'm going to do something with it. And believe for the reward tonight. Thank you, Lord God, for your power. And specifically for your presence. So many times we look and we see the demonic, but we don't see the dynamic. Tonight, we felt the dynamic. We sensed it. And Lord, we are going to give into that and so into it tonight. And we're not going to strike once, twice, three times. We're going to do it in abundance. Because we believe in that principle. Everybody in this building, I want you to pray this with me. Before you do anything, I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to say this. Thank you, sweetheart. I want you to say this with me. Lord, I believe that when you speak, it is my responsibility to obey you. And I want to do that tonight. Speak to me now. Show me what to give. And whatever you tell me to do, I will do it. Because I know that your, my obedience to you will change everything. Thank you. Now God, I pray, speak to every person, even those that are watching me on the internet. Speak to them right now. And show them what to give. Take an envelope. Don't please don't come empty under that'd be crazy. Take an envelope and prepare this offering because we're gonna hold it up to God and we're gonna give it to him and ask him for the reward. So if you if you haven't given, you say oh, I just got to the Lord.